All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 356 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and uh, today we're going to have some Georgia Southern news. Yes, I mean, this is uh, something that I saw on my uh, Discord, and um, I, I felt like it's time to talk about Georgia Southern. We're going to talk about the preview of the 2022 season. I'm going to refer to an article that I've seen on collegefootballnews.com. Like I said, this article was on my Discord, and I, I'm going to look into this and give you my thoughts and opinions about this article, com you know, basically compared to what I know about the upcoming season for Georgia Southern, because this article, I, I read through it and there's some, there are some discrepancies in here that I feel like that's just in, you know, just, just not, you know, correct. And um, there are some things that are just incomplete. I, I, I will take that back. I'm not going to say things that are not correct. They're just some things that are incomplete and some things are a little bit misinformed. So um, I will uh, go through this article and give you my two cents about what's going on. But yes, this is going to be like a reintroduction of the Georgia Southern Eagles new 2022 season. We're going to have a new coach. We have a new coaching staff. We got new players. We got a lot of transfers. We got a lot of stuff going on. So this is going to be a really good show if you have not you know, you don't know much about Georgia Southern. I've done a lot about the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, I also, like I said, we talk about Georgia Southern football here as well. So this is a, I think this is a good time to do so, especially with this article just being released a couple days ago. If this is your first time here, welcome to the first and frame rate show. I am VF Baller. Like I said, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. And uh, I can also be reached on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, also, if you want to listen to the audio side of the podcast, I'm on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. And uh, all the links are down in the description if you want to uh, find a way to subscribe to more than one of these avenues, just in case if the one you choose go down. And um, there's other ways to listen to this uh, information. Also, if you want to donate, all those links are down there as well. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, once again, this is from collegefootballnews.com. Uh, I want to make sure if I get this right. Shout out to, where is he? Peter Fl Flutak, Futak, I think that's what it is. Uh, Futak, I think that's his name. Peter Futak for putting out this article. And uh, we're going to get into uh, what he has put up here on this article. And I'm going to uh, contrast it to what I feel or what I know about the team. So basically, um, the article starts out saying that we used to be in a triple option for a long time. Yes, we actually have. And we've been very successful doing it. But for the last few years, we haven't been doing very well as far as winning games. Um, the running game just was not there the way it needed. Um, it wasn't there where it needed to be. And that was our bread and butter. Now we bring in a new coach, Coach Helton, and if you saw anything, um, any close uh, re uh, part or anything close to what we've seen uh, in at USC as far as the uh, aggressiveness, how they like to pass the ball, you saw a good dose of it in the spring game that we had not too long of, uh, ago, and you see that things are going to be changing. Uh, Cal Cabantrese is the new quarterback. He, um, six-year quarterback from Buffalo. He's going to be starting for Georgia Southern. Also, we had a few other backups that are going to be uh, competing for uh, uh, quarterback number two, Connor Sagalski, Zach Roseman. You know, we recently just had uh, Cam Ransom just – uh, he transferred, so he, well, he's in a transfer portal, so he's not necessarily uh, on the team anymore as far as I can remember, but um, that's going to be uh, what's going on here as far as quarterback. So there's a dynamic that has changed. Uh, we're going to read this right now, what it says here. It says, the hope is for Buffalo transfer Calvin Trees to add a steady veteran presence. The six-year quarterback can run, but he's more of a passer and can do a little bit of everything. The Eagles quarterback combined to throw for five touchdown passes and 12 picks. Uh, that was last year between Justin Tomlin and Cam Ransom. Like I said, Cam Ransom is not here anymore. And uh, unfortunately, but we do have like three or four other quarterbacks that are pretty much ready to go. I mean, Zach Roseman actually impressed me at the spring game. Connor Zagelski has been impressing me since last year. Uh, so, unfortunately, since uh, Cam is no longer um, 
well, he's in the transfer portal. I don't know how things are going to go. If it, Does he return or whatever the case may be? I'm not really sure. The receivers are in place to help. The emphasis wasn't on the passing game, so the numbers weren't amazing. Yeah, obviously we ran the ball more, so the passing numbers weren't there. But Caleb Hood led the way with 35 catches, 442 yards, and there's just enough speed around to hit more deep players. Three of the five touchdown catches went to Bo Johnson, 6'1", 225-pound junior, who needs to be a featured target. Now, see, this is where... I, I feel like this is the misinformation or the incompleteness come from, because if you know anything about, you know, what this team has been doing, the 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 transformation of this team offensively, where you seen like other guys and there's nothing to take away from Bo Johnson. But when you seen the 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 uh, I'm sorry, the spring game, you saw the spring game and you saw guys like Sam Kennison step up. Derwin Burgess was there to, to, to catch some passes. Um, You saw some guys that were actually, you know, stepping up and showing that they can catch the ball so uh there's a lot of receivers that are here or actually coming in i mean matter of fact um yesterday we just got another um we, we just got another receiver six foot four re receiver from louisville just transferred or to george southern so and I, i'm almost certain he's gonna be probably playing right away so we have a lot of receivers that are coming in here that are going to be uh I is going to be contributing right away. So, yeah, I understand you want to say Bo Johnson should be the featured target. I think he should be another target with all of these weapons we have because we have like three other tight ends that are actually, you know, can, you know, can catch the football as well. So this is a situation here where everything is not leaning on Caleb Hood and Bo Johnson. I mean, you have, you know, like we talked about um, in the spring game, Jeremy Singleton is another one that, that transferred from Houston. So you you know Houston you know you got Singleton you got Durham Burgess who was one of the star key players in the receiving you know game last year Sam Kennison has done a phenomenal job you know transferring transforming from a receiver I mean from wide receiver I'm sorry from quarterback to wide receiver you we have some targets we have a lot of targets and I haven't even mentioned the other ones guys who are already you know committed that are coming in this upcoming season so many guys so it, like i said this is a little bit incomplete so um I, I i wish that this was a little bit more in depth but i understand why and i'll talk about why it's not and i'll talk about that later on in the episode running backs need more room to improve uh i mean i'm sorry the running backs need more room to move which i agree the eagles have high powered numbers should average over five yards to carry a leader rusher logan wright is gone but juniors gerald green and jalen white combined over 800 yards nine touchdowns and five yards for per pop which i agree i think these two guys right here going to be a very good one at one two punch you also have a couple of other guys that can run the ball as well um and we also have like two or three I think we had like two or three other guys that have been recruited, you know, Caspi and uh, the other four star recruit that we have. Um, we, we, we have a, a handful of players that's going to be really, really good running the ball. And, and it's going to be really, really interesting to see uh, how well this running game is going to be because the running game never really been uh, never been really a problem never been a problem so this is gonna you know this is gonna be really good to see as far as the running backs go um the offensive the offensive front couldn't generate a push allowed men, too many players behind the line um just about everyone got around all-star guard Khalil Crowder wow that is that is really really harsh to put that out there but okay um we'll 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 re revisit the offensive line at another time because we boasted up the offensive line and that that the, the whole Officer line thing could be another uh, episode in itself. So we'll talk about that at another time. So we're going to talk about uh, the defense here. The defense tried to help the cause, but it wasn't great against the run and finished one tenth in the nation overall. Not as not as experienced on the offensive line, but six starters are back with enough upside to be a whole lot stronger under new coaching staff. I, I will agree because um, we did not do well. We had a lot of injuries, which we will talk about as we go along in the, in the episode. Um, but yeah, it, it was a lot going on with uh, a lot of injuries and people going being down and guys, you know, just was not available. Um, six year senior, Justin Ellis returns at the, uh, the, for the team leading the league with uh, leading the team with five sacks combined with veteran Dylan Springer. And um, yeah, we, like I said, you, we have guys that can play on that line. Also, you have guys like Christian Varner since CJ Wright is gone. North Carolina transfer Christian Varner should come in and, and contribute right away. 
the linebacking core was young last season, which I think honestly, which is really uh, unfortunate because, um, you know, the linebackers, we had a lot of them and none of them were really good. You know, Eldrick Robinson, he went to Wake Forest. Michael Edwards left to go to East Carolina. Those two guys, especially Eldrick Robinson, I did a, a lot of extensive coverage on him earlier last year. And I thought he was going to be one of the guys that are going to be stepping up because he was the next man up. Michael Edwards did his thing as well. He played pretty good, but both of those guys are gone. Um, there was next to nothing happening in the backfield from the outside linebackers. That's about the change on the new staff, but the inside guys have to emerge. Um, this is another thing that I'm I'm kind of worried about. There was not much uh there's not much emphasis on the, the inside linebacker, outside linebackers. Didn't talk about how many guys who actually uh came into uh the front that was committed. We knew, we just had one person, uh one guy just uh commit uh the other day. Unfortunately, I can't remember his name, but um there there's a couple of guys here that's going to be contributing right away. I mean, not only the guys who are uh committed earlier this year but we have like i said we had another one just commit a couple days ago um the secondary has to be far far better it will be thanks to the star of Derek canteen one of the best defensive players in the Sun Belt, if not in the in, in the, all of college football led the league in interceptions um the year that he did play so it would be good to see him uh come back and play at a top level unfortunately he was out due to a torn pectoral muscle but he should be back and ready to go Leading, and this is nothing. We have a lot of guys in the secondary that just that just that is not mentioned here, you know, um, that that have been recruited. And uh, this is one thing. If you're gonna do a preview, you need to be complete about what's go, what to be looking uh, ahead for, uh, looking uh, looking ahead for, you know, knowing what we're gonna be looking at as the season starts. Um, going back to the linebacker situation, didn't even talk about a Kaji Jackson or you know uh, uh, guys like that that are ready that could be ready to go. Um, Kavon Glint that could be ready to go and play. Going to the secondary, you didn't talk about an Ashton Whitner that's going to be playing for us. You didn't talk about um, Mark Stampley, another guy that's going to be be ready to go. Quincy Bonner, will he transfer? Another guy who trans that changed from quarterback to uh, defensive back. You know, Mizell Williams, Justin Birdsong. I mean, the list goes on and on. And um, I'm really, really interested to see what is going on there. And um, y y this is something that we really need to, you know, that should have been put out there. So with the defensive backs, all you're going to do is talk about their canteen and not talk about all the other guys. I mean, let, let's let, I, I, I can name two more. Seth Robinson, Zion, Zion McGee. You have a lot of defensive backs here that we should be spotlighting, not just, you know, talking about one person and saying, like, it has to be better. You know, you, if you're going to do a preview, you should do better than this. Leading tackler Anthony Wilson is back at the safety spot at the uh, – Making 78 tackles, versatile, uh, the and versatile, uh, Justin Birdsong returns for a fifth year after finishing fourth on the team with 49 stops. You know, I didn't even talk about Anthony Wilson, that's another guy, but you know, I get it. You add two more to this, you know, to this article, but like I said, there's a much more, especially if you got guys coming into play, these are guys that you may want to, you know, talk about. Let's go to the next, uh, let's see, the next, okay, here we go. This is the next uh page. Um keys to 22 offense. Um let's see. The keys find one reliable thing that works obviously, but I don't think that we're going to be running the ball as much, but I think that the running game could help. I'm not going to go into too much of this. I'm not going to read that because I mean that's just basically what it is. I mean, find one reliable one reliable thing that works. Second, um but as far as the defense goes, we talked about the offense a good bit, but as far as the defense goes, secondary has to be a whole lot stronger. I agree, but I don't think it's all on the secondary. I mean, the second, the thing about the secondary is we were just we had just a lot of injuries. That doesn't mean that you know that we were just bad. We just had a lot of injuries. If anything, we need to need to find guys up front that can stop the run because we did have some injuries up front. You know, um, Trent Edwards was was injured was injured on the offensive um not offensive line, but the the linebackers he was out. And we had a couple of guys who did step up, but you know we just need to get better there because it wasn't it wasn't uh the injuries per se were mostly in the secondary, and 
for the most part, the guys who are coming back just need to step up in the trenches. I think that's basically what it is. We need more players to step up in the trenches, and we just talked about that as far as the defense goes. As far as the secondary, I think the secondary is going to be fine. Um, just because the, a lot of guys just, that are coming back that are just going to be um, better. You know what I'm saying? The fact that they're just going to be coming back is just going to be better. So um, with that being said, I'm not too much worried about that. Um, key player for 2022, uh, this guy, um, the, the, the the producer of this article, put in um, Noel, uh, not Noel, but Parker Devine. Seniors, 265 defensive tackle. I'm not taking nothing away from the Parker. I don't think he's the key player, but I think he's going to be a big help. Um, I, I think when you got guys like Justin Ellis and you got guys like uh, um, you got Christian Varner, you got guys that's up there that's going to be on the line like that. I think those are the guys that are going to be the ones you want to uh, really look to. You know, that that's my thing when you look at that. Uh, I, I'm not really um, Watson Trent. I, I think I keep saying this thing backwards. Marquise Watson Trent that was injured. And I, I apologize for that. But nevertheless, when you have guys like that uh, on the defensive line, this this is the thing that you may want to, uh, you know, put a more emphasis on. I don't think Parker Devine is the key player. Now, um, but I, I, like I said, I think he's absolutely going to help. Key transfer, uh, obviously, uh, Kyle Van Trees. I think he's going to be the key guy um, coming from Buffalo. He's going to be the quarterback that's going to lead this team. We do have other guys behind them that's, that can play very well, but it, it, he's the biggest transfer to Georgia Southern. It's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Key games for 2022, uh, Georgia State, uh, obviously, I, I can't say this enough, that um, Georgia State on October 8th, even though it's not a later game, it's a rivalry game. We really need to win this game. We lost two in a row, which is, um, you know, you know, it is what it is. You know, uh, uh, we, we had a down season, and um, Georgia State has bragging rights right now. I don't think the series is as big as they make it seem to be. You know, uh, they, they make it seem like it's the biggest thing in the world to have a you know, a, a slight edge on us. But all things considered, it's, it's, it's a fairly even rivalry, you know, um, and considering what's been going on. And um, it's a big deal to win against Georgia State. It's, very, it's a really big deal for bragging rights and for uh, recruiting because you don't go across the whole state of, uh, of Georgia, every county, in, as, as what Georgia Southern did, to recruit players in every county in, every, in the state, and you can't beat your rival. I mean, it just doesn't it, it doesn't compute. So you got to do your best to compete and win against your rival. And there's there's, there's, there's no, no way around that. I mean, I think other key games, uh, obviously the Appalachian State game, you want to beat you want to win beat that game as well. I mean, they, 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 uh, you want to win that game as well. There's always a situation where, um, you know that 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 always uh, is a big time deal when you beat win against Appalachian State. You know, with them is always bragging rights. It's always a line of respect, but you always want to beat them. So those two games, for the most part, are pretty much the key games, in my opinion. Um, there's other games that uh we need to look into, but we'll talk about those at a later time. Uh, everything else here is is a bunch of stats, and uh, we're gonna go to the last page of this article, and we'll wrap this thing up. Uh, what will happen? Um, I I still believe that this team can win eight games. Um, right here says Georgia Southern is set to win a total between 5.5. I mean, that's a safe pick. Uh, I just think that with the lack of information here, if you're reading this, you're probably thinking, yeah, this team's going to win five games. But when you look at the total picture of what this team has, um, as far as, you know, guys like a Dylan Springer, guys like, uh, Derek Canteen. Uh, when you have other guys that are coming back, like Justin Ellis, you got Christian Varner to transfer, Kevon Glenn. Uh, you also have Chris, um, you know, other linebackers that are coming into play and uh, going to compete against other teams. And you flip it over, and you look at the offense and the way the offense look like they can move the ball. Uh, I, I can see this team winning eight eight games. You know, and I'm not joking when I say that. I've been saying it on record ever since Coach Helton took the took the reins as coach. So 5.5 is a very safe pick, but I'm not sure. I I, I think with what we have, uh, I think we can win eight games. So I'm not I'm not really 
I'm not really uh, keen on the 5.5. And I think that's it for this article. So what happens? I, like I said, I, I, I think this is a pretty good uh, assessment, all things considered, because I don't think too many teams or too many, uh, you know, people really focus on Georgia Southern football like that. So this article did okay, but it was very incomplete because if you haven't been following the team, you would not know exactly what's, you know, going on down here. So uh, I think it was okay. It, it, it was a little incomplete, but I feel that with what this team is capable of, and if you don't know what's going on with this, with the preview of this team, uh, if you don't know what's going on, you're listening or hearing about the preview of the team. You're probably thinking that this is a below average team, and uh, rightfully so. And uh, uh, talent wise, I think they're above average because we have a lot of talent. But based on a three and nine season last year, I can understand that. At the end of the day, I think that uh, I think we're going to be much better than advertised. I think so. I think we're going to be much me better than advertised. And uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it was a little bit all over the place. Uh, I want to let you guys know this is my first time really doing uh, Georgia Southern commentary in a long time because so much has been going on with Atlanta Falcons. So I'm a little bit rusty on what's going on over here in Statesboro. But I will say, I think something special is going on over here. And I think that we're going to have a fun season, not only with the Georgia Southern Eagles. I, I think we're going to have one with the Atlanta Falcons as well. But I think the Georgia Southern Eagles are going to surprise a lot of people. I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. And there's, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to be much better than advertised. I, th I don't think it's going to be a 3-9 season. I, I feel that with the aggressiveness and on the offense and um, the more sound and in the more sound and disciplined defense and the players that are coming back, I think we're going to be uh, much better than the three and nine. And, and I, I got us winning eight games. I, I really do. If you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this commentary, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already. Yes. It's been a while since I've done Georgia Southern commentary and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, there's going to be a lot more as, the, as the season gets closer and uh, we're just going to continue to move right along with both of these teams. Um, if you want to share this, hit that share button on the YouTube page and send it to somebody. Let them know what we're doing over here. Um, also, if you want to subscribe to any of the other uh, avenues, the links are down in the description. Give me some feedback. Let me know what I've done. Good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, give me a five-star rating on that uh, podcast uh, chart if you don't mind. Um, if not, like I said, give me some feedback. Let me know what I need to do better. Uh, and uh, we'll just go from there. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your Wednesday. I have some things to do. I need to do around the house and uh, I will be doing that. I may go and help out and work a little bit, do a little bit of overtime as well. Cause uh, I've been asked to do so. So I may do a couple hours. Never know. We'll see. All right, y'all y'all take it easy and uh, y'all be blessed. Y'all take care. Peace. Mm -hmm.